In this video, we are going to take a look at limiting the number of rows that are being returned by the database. And let's do uh, select. And I'm just going to do a select star from employees. And if you've been watching, you might not have seen it yet, but it's actually, we've been using the limit clause already. MySQL Workbench has been using it. You can see here, action select star from employees down at the bottom of the screen, limit zero comma 100. So the MySQL Workbench is limiting the result set. So this employee table, remember, if I did count, And run it that way, we've got uh, what's that about three hundred thousand employees in the in the database. So that, that's a, a pretty large number. So if MySQL Workbench wasn't doing that, and we're receiving all three hundred thousand rows back from the database every time, the performance of MySQL Workbench would be really really slow. So now let's go ahead and do a select star from employees. And now I'm going to use the keyword of limit and let's say 20. So I'm just going to limit back to 20. So this is going to limit back 20 rows coming from the database. Now you can see that I, I just have this one little screen of data returned back. And you can see down on the, the action output, now I have a limit of 20. And you notice before I was doing zero, that zero is actually an offset. And if you just specify one number, that is a, a limit of the number of rows and an offset allows you to page through so this is if i write this statement now these two statements are the same and they function the same because if i don't specify an offset if i don't specify two numbers and the first number is going to be the offset the second number is the number of rows returned so but these two statements at line five and line seven are functionally identical. And what the offset does is it allows you to page through records in the database. Think of a, a website that you bring brought up like viewing search results on amazon.com is a great example where you go to the next page. That's kind of what a limit clause is going to allow you to do is to take chunks of data out of the database. So if I wanted to see the next section of data out of the limit clause, I could do 20 and let's see here i got ko warwick and uh, that's the default one right now now you can see i, I have a, a different last name there and i wonder if i bring him back if i just do 19 yeah so that ko warwick is now the top one because i did a limit of 19 so it, he's the last one and I'd be careful with this because I'm not specifying a sort. And so you could get some random results here because of the natural ordering out of the database. So I am going to take all this SQL and put it in. If you haven't already, I am putting in examples.sql that are preserving all the SQL statements that I write. So now I'm specifying an order by clause. And I'm going to do that the same on this. So you can see that we can combine a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about through the course. So here's a, an order by, I'm making sure that I'm ordering by the employee number. I'm not depending on a natural source, sort out of the database. And here I can also do that as well. So didn't effectively change the sort out of the database, but now we can see how this limit and the offset work together. I should say offset and comma limit. This is a very handy one. Sometimes you don't see it used too much depending on what you're doing with SQL. If you're using MySQL from PHP and you're paging through data, you'll definitely be using the limit clause. If you're exporting a report, you might not be using the limit clause. It, this becomes more valuable when you're dealing with very large sets of data. And you can see that MySQL Workbench has been using the limit clause all along for us. Because when I just do a select star, actually let, let me do this just to show you my SQL workbench again. If I do a select star from employees with no limit and run it, you can see down at the bottom where it's doing a limit zero comma 1000. And you can see right here, uh, we have an option to limit the number of rows coming back. So I'm using the default of 1000 and I can scroll down and this is a record set of 1000 rows that were retrieved from the database. Now, 
if you have this set up to a larger number, as you go up to larger numbers, the performance is going to get progressively slower. So let's take the 50,000 and run that again. And you can see it took a, a second longer to come back so because I, I said 50,000. So I could do 300,000 like so and see how long that little spinner was going because we just went to the database and said, hey, database, give me 300,000 rows. Went to the disk and it read all 300,000 rows out of that table and gave it back to MySQL Workbench. Now, this is going to, this performance is going to vary depending on the machine that you're running on. It's very, very, it's going to vary quite a bit depending on what operating system you have and what hardware you have. If you have a slower, older machine, obviously that beach ball is going to be spinning longer than it would on a faster, more modern machine. And again, I, I'm just referencing that as a function of the database going to the disk reading all these rows, taking that data, and then returning it across the network back to your client. So when you're dealing with large record sets, that can really, really start slowing things down.